CCA, which is the Buriana Collectibles Club, Club, of of America. America. Club of America. That explains the hat. Yep. Right, exactly. Okay. So yeah. I did a story on these guys a few years ago and got to see their amazing collections. Kevin actually runs a storefront for BCCA out in Fenton. So I did this long profile of these guys and um, and so when we partnered on the book, they're like, you know the beer guys. Right. <laughs> Have at it. But tell us about the organization. What's, what's the organization? Well, it started out as the Beer Can Collectors of America in 1970, founded right here in St. Louis. And uh, we changed our name to Brewery Collectibles Club a few years ago to try to appeal to a wider audience. And uh, that was part of what got me and Don interested in researching and writing about the breweries was uh, the collecting aspect of it. So you would go around collecting all different beer cans. You have beer cans. How many different beer cans do you have? Oh, I've got a few hundred. Uh, Don, how many do you have? Uh, 10,000. You have 10,000 beer cans? Uh, yes. I've seen them. I've witnessed this. Are, yes. they, are they empty or are they full? I emptied every one myself. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, it's a hobby. We have uh, conventions and, uh, and you can... But as a collectible, do you collect it as a can that's full or a can that's empty? Uh, definitely empty. Empty, uh, You okay. want to empty them because if they get jostled off the shelf, it, they'll, they'll usually de- uh, dent. They get ruined. Dent what's, your, what's, your, what's your prized beer can? Uh, I've got some 007 James Bond cans, Uh, and uh, I also collect a lot of other uh, beer advertising, a lot of uh, of turn-of-the-century lithos and corner signs, so it's more than just beer cans. How did you get into all of this? Uh, Well, uh, a friend of mine uh, found some old uh, embossed bottles uh, from some breweries I'd never heard of before, and I started researching them, and then they, the rest, they say, is history. Is it cans or bottles? Or it's everything. Uh, all the above. All the above. You Pretty should ask much, him about uh, beer combs, Squeeze through the front door. All right, what, what are beer combs? Beer combs? Beer combs, As in yes. comb your hair combs? Kind of, that's like a, well, he showed me. They don't exist anymore because they're uh, not, yeah. Well, rumor has it that they were, uh, uh, the federal government... Uh, made them illegal, but uh, uh, when you get a, a uh, pitcher of draft beer, it's a long uh, comb like this. Shaped like a tongue depressor. Like a dep- yeah. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, you would uh, take, they used to take them and get the foam off. Okay, yeah. But it's also rumored that uh, the bartenders would uh, wipe, wipe it under their armpits. And <laughs> armpits, and that's why they were ruled. Uh, Bartenders. <laughs> Aren't we glad they're defunct now? Like yes, <laughs> indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. So the book starts at when? At the very beginning. 1809. What happened in 1809? Uh, that was the first recorded brewery. There was an ad in one of the early newspapers. Here in St. Louis? Here in St. Louis. Where Where was this brewery and what was the name of it? Well, that was downtown. Uh, what was the name of the guy, uh, Don? Coons? Yeah, Coon. Coons. Uh, Coons. There, there may have been one earlier, but this is the earliest that we can actually document for sure. What happened to Coons? We don't know. He disappeared. We don't know. Do you have a beer can? Uh, no beer can no. from, <laughs> uh, beer from, from that time. No. Um, why, why, it seems like a silly question, but with Anheuser-Busch and now InBev coming in, and now you have an explosion of all of these craft beers. You go to the supermarket, and you've got a wall of craft beers, and it's really this sort of renaissance of craft beers, which is what Anheuser-Busch was yeah. at one point, I guess, right? I mean, it was a craft beer at some point. Um why is St. Louis such a such a such a place for this beer to sort of grow up around? Well, boy, that's a good question. But uh, you know, it's just tradition. Uh, in the 1950s, St. Louis had four of the top 20 uh, beer companies in the world. Uh, well, maybe not the world, but at least in the U.S. Right. And uh, you know, then we got down to one brewery, just AB, in the 1970s after Falstaff closed yeah. and. St. Louis was a little bit behind the curve when it came to getting uh, brew pubs and a lot of micros, but in the last five or six years, it, it's just exploded, and, and it's wonderful. And a lot of it is due to, there was a lot of, uh, I mean, people were really solidly behind AB, and I think after the brewery sale, it was like, well, they're not our hometown brewer anymore, and so people felt like they could defect from, right? Yeah, and there was a lot of talent, like people left or they were laid off, and you had well, the best brewing talent in the world here in St. Louis. That's a great right? point. I mean, they, when they, they sort of created their own competition when they fired everybody, mm-hmm. they, they educated all these people on how to uh, make beer, sell beer, process beer, and so they just let them all out, and they all started breweries. 
well, what else were they going to do? That right. was their calling, their talent. Right. Yeah. That said, I think they've managed to, like, the micros and the macros have managed to, like, in St. Louis, there's, you know, everyone kind of plays nice, I think. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. a tradition in town here. Mm-hmm. goes back uh, 200 years. Um, you agree, though, that people no longer feel um, the loyalty to Anheuser-Busch that they once did. Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I agree. Some people still feel some loyalty towards it, and, you know, they still sell a lot of beer around here. But, yeah, I mean, kind of the, kind of the thrill is gone. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, tonight, uh, Urban Chestnut, uh, right there on uh, Manchester in Tower Grove, um, from 5 to 7.30, Right. The book is called um, uh, St. Louis Brews, The History of Brewing in the Gateway City. You should also know that every single piece of furniture at the Urban Chestnut Brewery was made from the fallen trees from the fluorescent uh, tornado from a couple years oh, ago. Really? Well, I, know I had no idea. I didn't know that either. That's that? cool. Yeah. yeah. Should have put that in the book. You should have put that in the book. You should have <laughs> listened to the show. It's all right. You're too busy drinking. Um, do, you, do you have a favorite? Beer, local beer, is one or two of your favorites? What's well? I'm from Illinois, so I like uh, Excel beer out of Breeze. I like their stout. Okay, you have uh, uh, O'Fallon Gold. O'Fallon Gold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually uh, ale, but uh, it's it's very delicious. Yeah, uh, it really seems to be. I like to go to the supermarket now and do the the mix and match, right? So you, they got them all there, and you get the six pack for eight bucks, and you can pick six different beers and put them in, and you're on your way. Um, uh, all right, there you go. That is uh, Stephanie Russell, Donald Roussan, and Kevin Caius. Caius, uh, co-authors of the book St. Louis Brews: uh, The History of Brewing in the Gateway City. Where'd you get the hat? Uh, actually, a, a driver. I went to his house to buy some items, and he kind of short guy like me, and he he said try it on and it fit. He said I ah, just take it. Just take it. Um, I wear the old beer clothes because it's a good way to strike up a conversation like we. Just did a moment ago. Yeah, it's either that or people run in the opposite direction because they're so well, afraid of you. <laughs> could be. Oh, nobody's um, afraid of beer. Uh, it's funny when I wear this, uh, like at the airport, people will ask me for directions or to, or to take their uh, take You their wear luggage. that at the airport? Well, when I'm, I'm going to... I'm don't hand you a bag and say, give, give me a ticket. <laughs> I've well, seen it. <laughs> well, when I go to pick somebody up, it's, oh, okay. I'm easy to spot. Sure, sure, sure. But I've actually carried some bags before. Sure, why not? Tell me about the uh, storefront. Where's the storefront? It's at 747 Maris Court in Fenton. And actually, the BCCA office has been there since 1977 and we sell our cans and we sell containers for carrying cans around in and plastic wrappers for cans is it a place to go and check out old um, billboards and and neon signs and no not really we have no. a library and we have a small collection on display but All nothing right. spectacular and what's the website the website is bcca.com bcca.com great and club great club uh tonight at urban chestnut brewery in the grove from five to seven they're going to sign their book st louis brews the history of brewing in the gateway city stephanie donald and kevin thanks for coming in Thank oh, you. thanks for thank having you us thank you very much you got it 920 here big 550 ktrs bowen dental care